It's Thursday. It's hot. I'm sick. Not gonna do a whole lot of narration for this video. Um, so let's go. All right. Um, as I was editing the last video, I realized I moved this hole a little too close to this face. Um, by about 75 thou. Not a big deal. I don't think it should interfere with any of the other work. Um, but I will have to compensate with the. Uh, the, the nut and the uh, the lock thing. Um, Alright, at the moment I have three holes to drill in the side of this guy. And then I've got to clean out this slot, um, mill the face down a little bit, uh, and then put the dovetail in. That's all I gotta do for this. Uh, oh, and then I gotta turn it around and uh, drill and tap the other side for some sort of spindle so it can sit in the uh, the mill. So, right now I'm gonna figure out where I am. Where I need to be. Alright, so uh, spun this 90 degrees. Um, just using the uh, the scale on the side of my table here. Um, I use that same method that I showed you in the last video where you bring the tool down, pass over, get a line and find the center of that line. Um, and so we're sitting right right where we're supposed to be. Although it looks a little short because it's these holes are only 100 thou in but then again they're only tiny holes. Um, these holes are actually supposed to be, t uh, this hole in the center, there's three holes, the center one um, is supposed to be uh, tapped for a 632, uh, which calls for a number 36 drill. I don't have a number 36, so I'm going, uh, what, 3 thou oversized to a 764 um, And then the ones on the outside here, there's, there's two on either side that are simply drilled and counterbored for uh, a socket head cap screw. So the size of them is not really that much, that important. Um, yeah, they're, they're, they're drilled and counterbored for a 440 socket head. Um, so all I'll do is pull out my 440 tap, measure it, and we'll go next size up that's appropriate. All right, so uh, let's uh, center drill this, and uh, then we'll actually run a, a real drill through it. Uh, didn't go very deep. This uh, this drill is actually much smaller than the end on my center drill, so I don't want to go too deep and end up screwing that hole up. Um, and also I, I did put some uh, cutting fluid on it. Uh oh. So I ran into a little bit of trouble there. Um, the drill, too small to fit in my chuck. So I ended up having to pull out my little pin chuck here. Um, saved me more times than I can count. Uh, it's just, basically it's the same thing as this chuck. Um, except, get the lid off here. It's got a couple of inserts that are good for different sizes. See this one's the smallest one. This one is a medium-sized one. You can see there's a bit of a, a circular pattern cut into this one that's not on the other one. And the one I got in there is the biggest size. Um, now technically that drill bit is too big for this chuck, 
but it'll work for this little bit I'm doing. fluid. Just raise the camera up. Why are you looking at the ground? Um, I got the tap handle in the, in the drill chuck here. Um, I haven't moved the table, so it should still be in the right spot. drill and tapped um, this one I don't know I don't use this this handle very often and it kept sliding so I had to switch to a different one but uh, I got uh, I got that all done uh, and after looking at the drawing and looking at my little chart um, I think I'm going to use the same drill again for these other two holes because they're clearance holes um, and this should be big enough um, that it provides a, a, a tight enough fit, but doesn't let the, the screws wiggle around too much. Alright, now I need to move over 300 thou. So, we unlock the table. I've already got my dial here set to zero. So, here we go, one, two, three, lock the table back up. the camera up so I just went ahead and finished these two holes um, now I need to counterbore them so that the uh, socket head cap screw can actually sit inside there um, it doesn't give me a dimension on the the uh, drawing and I don't actually have these the screws that are supposed to be in here yet um, so uh, a quick internet search told me that the uh, head is about 183 um, so I'm going to counter counterbore them with a uh, 3 16 end mill which is 187 that should give me enough clearance um, there are actual actual tools that will allow you to do this specifically size for different cap screws uh, they're a very specialized tool and I don't have them so uh, this is going to be good enough for me. Put some stuff on there. Bring this down a little bit more.
good enough. Got the table flipped on its back again. Um, you can't really see what's going on on top, but I'll, I'll move the camera up in a minute. Um, what I did, uh, I have a, a big end mill in a 3 16 end mill, I believe it is, or a 11 16 end mill. Right. Yeah. I have an 11 16 end mill. It's uh, 6875. Um, and then all I did, I wanted to find the edge of it. Um, I came in using the dials. Um, I moved in a little bit, moved past, moved in a little bit more, moved past. And as you can see here, I'll just unlock the table. It's taken a tiny little thin slice. You can see the little dot there. That's just barely where I made contact on the one side. Uh, so when I did this, the, the, the end mill wasn't spinning. So, now that I know I'm right on the edge, pull out my little calculator here. 0.6875 divided by 2. 344. We're going to come over 344. Make sure I lock this. Now that I'm in the center, um, I need to come back a little bit because I need to start my cut just on this side. Uh, I've done a little bit of math there. Need to I found out I need to come back uh, 156 thou. All right, I'm pretty sure I'm sitting where I need to be. Let's just raise you up a little bit. Sort of see what's going on. And I need to come down two hundred thou. I'm to depth on this first cut. Now I've got to go over 250 thou and uh, cut this other side.
All right. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Look that straight down at it. You see this one is sort of small. This one's a little larger. It's because that's, that's the side that has to have the dovetail put in it. All right, and this is my uh, my little home ta homemade dovetail cutter. Uh, specifically, it's 45 degrees um, with, I believe I put about a 20 thou face on the ed end of it. Um, if you're interested in seeing the actual close-up view and, and an explanation of how it's made, um, you can check out the uh, annotation. Uh, it's also in the uh, description and it should open in a, in a, in a new window. turned out really exceptionally well in my opinion. Give you a good close look here. Just wait for it to focus. There it is. Uh, I got a little bit more flat on the top than I do on the bottom, but that'll be okay. Um, I can just take a skim cut off this and make it even. But it cut nice and straight. You can see it's it's kind of deceptive in the camera. It does look like this side is just a touch thinner than this side over here, but it's not. It's just the uh, because the the camera tries to focus on one point. So. Um, this piece is done except for flipping it over and tapping the back side and uh, I'm not going to bother to show you that it's very straightforward and simple so uh, see you next week with uh, what are we doing next week we're going to do I think we're going to do the slide next week so you guys have yourselves a good day <laughs>